Hey guys, as always, it's the Digital Pumpkin Cat, and today we will be ranking Spirit Halloween's 2024 Halloween animatronic lineup to from worst to best. Now, this is a new ranking system I've been using, and I will continue to use because you guys voted for it. And I will not be using the tier lists anymore, I will be using this. And yeah, let's just see how it turns out. We are ranking your guys' favorite company, Spirit Halloween. They definitely did great this year. So let's get started with the worst Spirit Halloween prop of 2024. Now in last place, for me, we have the Cremator. The worst Spirit Halloween prop of 2024 in my eyes. Disclaimer, first of all, before we get into all of these, in my eyes, every single prop this year is good which is really, really uncommon. Usually we see, uh, usually I see myself liking every single lineup, like Party City and Home Depot. I never thought I'd see the day that Spirit would bring a lineup to this amount to my liking, but I really like every single prop from this year. And that's not to say I hate this prop, of course, even though it is last. I think it is the worst of the year, but I do not think it's bad in any means. Kind of bordering on bad, not gonna lie. But it's literally just a bed sheet, and the, it's just another crappy con. It's just another concept in crappy execution prop. We have a lot of those this year, so bear with me. And the skull. First of all, in terms of looks, the skull doesn't look burnt. It looks like a crappy metal material, and not the good metal. It's like they were trying to paint something metal which is technically what they were doing here, although for some reason they thought it looked burnt. It does not look burnt at all. You wanna have like charred, cracked skull. That's not what we got here. We got some crappy metallic looking skull and then the skeletal hands that he has aren't burnt at all. So I don't know what's happening there. It's two different colors here and they don't look good at all. And then the clothes, it's just a black bedsheet, and the fact that the light is shining through instead of the light being on him from the outside just tells us about the quality, even though I don't have it in my hand. It's very, very thin and does not look good at all. They could have done something like a red robe with satin pendants to show that he's more on the demonic side and to show his background too, since that's kind of what he is in the description. But we didn't get that. We just got a black robe on him, and they called it a day. And then, I will, the good about this guy is his audio, even though it's generic and kind of would fit any Reaper in this category, I still do like it and it is pretty nice classic audio from Techie, and the lights definitely look good and sell the Cremator character and sell that fire design. And overall, it's definitely disappointing and I still do think it's very, very mid, bordering on bad for me but I still do like it, and I still do think it is a pretty good prop, but definitely disappointing. Second to last, we have Gravestone Ghoul. Again, I still do like him, and I still do think he's good. Definitely better than our last Tombstone prop from last year that I do own, Eternal Rest. I definitely think he is better, and honestly, one of the better modern day Tombstone props. But there is still major cons with him. Um, I'm just going to talk very briefly about him. I definitely don't have a lot to say. It's pretty simple. Um, it, I mean, the twitching animation does look creepy, but yet yeah, doesn't really work. And if he, I would like it if he shook the tombstone, like say it was on springs, just like a lot of animatronics do. But that would kind of look, that would look more disturbing and more menacing. But him just shaking around in there almost looks goofy in a way. And he has no detail on the clothing, although I applaud them for not making it just pitch black. More of a dampy, dark brown and almost green looking texture. I definitely like the face, even though it's reused. They did add some stuff to it, so I guess it's not totally reused, but I definitely like it and it works here. I like the green lights and the tombstones already, also pretty cool. So overall, I think he's a fine animatronic, definitely a mid-lens animatronic, really mid in my opinion, but he's still pretty cool no matter how mid he is, I still do like him. Next up we've got Night Terror. Now the only reason why you guys don't like this thing is because you got your hopes up too much via the name. 
Now, I'm not going to base off the name here. Night Terror is a pretty damn cool name, but honestly, since it could be anything, I did not get my hopes up, unlike you guys, so I wasn't really expecting anything from it. So I kind of saw it through fresh eyes and not bias eyes, and I honestly really like it. Not really like it. I do think it's bordering on mid, but it's definitely a good prop in my eyes, and that's solely because it's not made to be amazing, it's not made to be a standout prop, and it's only 100 bucks. It's a budget prop for families and kids, and I definitely think while he is bordering on the kids' friendly and childish side, I definitely think there is still a creepy factor to him, and I definitely like his character, how the head and face and pumpkin overall is just all burnt, and I like his clothes, how it's all green. The orange, black, and green color scheme really work here for me, and while it is, again, kids-friendly, I do like how it's a pretty good jump scare and definitely better quality than a Sunstar prop, even though you guys are all saying it is, because it's really not. It's sound and light, I know it's kind of close, and honestly, the reused face mold on this thing, I am not mad at all, because we need to see that face mold on more props. It's a great face mold, and I think it should be reused, so overall, I think this guy is a really good alternative for the price, and definitely a good family prop, and a good background piece, and I'm hoping to pick it up. Congratulations, now we hit the point of props that I really do like. And starting off with Towering Tallulah, I'm going to talk as brief as hell about her. She's definitely the worst Mr. Dark reskin. Um, Hellspawn is still the best in my opinion, but Mr. Dark's still great for being the OG. And they both made sense. This one does not in my opinion. And I mean, they also reused a bunch of stuff like the face mold and hands. I think the face mold is fine to reuse from the siren, of course, if it is scary and if it does fit the prop, and in this case it's a good fit face mold and it fits the prop, so I'll let them off of that. And I mean, it does not make sense in my opinion, a witch just shooting up in the air. As good as a jump scare as it is, that's why I'm putting it this high on the list, but as good as a jump scare as it is, I do not think the character is great at all, and it definitely does not fit the mech. And I wish they did more with this reskin, they could have done a lot. I could think of a million characters they can use for this mech, but it kind of turns out to be disappointing, and yet still a really good prop since it is a Mr. Dark reskin. So I, mu I will like it in person, probably. I will like it more, and I will definitely try and pick this thing up just because it's a Mr. Dark reskin. That's the only thing why this prop is good in any mean, but I still like it. So believe it or not, we have Max Draw, and I actually have a lot to talk about him. So at the beginning of the year, we, when I first saw him, I literally made a post saying that this is the worst Scarecrow prop of all time, and I really de did mean that. But as time went on, and as people started to get him, my opinions definitely changed on him, and I started to see what other people see in Max Draw. Now, it's first things first, it's a really great illusion, how he's floating on that pitchfork, and it's it really works because he actually is floating, but I really like the look of him now. I kept saying it looks cheap and too kids friendly, but from the ones that we from the ones that people have received, it's a really detailed face and the paint job works really, really well. There's like stains and moss all over it, and it's very realistic. And I finally see what they were trying to do with the face. Like, there's a pumpkin under it, and it's covered with burlap, and one side of the face is, I guess, torn off, showing that it's a demonic face inside. But I wish they did it kind of differently, like it's split down both sides, like it's split down the middle, and one, fit, and one side has like, you know, the teeth and the pumpkin guts and eyes and stuff. And the other side is, of course, covered with burlap. They kind of did that a little weird, I will admit. And while I do really love the face, I still kind of hold that it is pretty kids-friendly. But that's not really a bad thing. And I do like how when he turns his head, that it shows off that teeth. Like, maybe when he, he turns his head to the right, you see the kids-friendly face. And then when he turns to the left, you see the teeth. And I really think that's cool. Everybody's complaining that he needs more animation. But I mean, what else could he do? He's on the pole. 
The only thing that I have in mind was be him shaking, like that SBI scarecrow from Morris, and that would just look cheap and weird. So I'm very, very fine with just head movement, and I think it really works for the kind of character that he is. And it's a very unique take on the scarecrow character, and I honestly really, really like it. It's definitely the most prop I think that has been growing on me. It's crazy how much this guy has climbed up the ladder. So here we have Shirley Stab. Now you guys probably thought I would put her higher, but honestly, I think I should have put her a little lower. I think I'm just putting her this high because of the concept, but this is another one that had a great concept and the execution kind of sucked. But I still really do love the 50s aesthetic and how it's based on the 50s. We don't get a lot of props like that. And I love how, I just love her concept overall. And she looks good too. But in terms of looks, she has zero blood on her whatsoever. She's got those few dribbles on the knife in her face, but those are like black almost. And I, it's just not that obvious. There should be no skin tone on this thing. That's how much blood should be on a prop like this. Because I just don't know. I think they shouldn't have gone blood. I sh they should have gone more animation and they should have lowered her to at least 180. And even that is kind of a little too much for one animation and like zero blood. It's honestly pretty disappointing. I was getting hyped when I saw her in the teaser, but now she's kind of just there in my opinion. And yet she is a really, really scary and really gruesome prop for spirit standards. Even for online onlys, I just think they couldn't have executed her better. Here we have the Dark Princess. A very dark, pun intended, scary and sinister concept, and a very dark, scary, and sinister execution. And that's not for all of the props this year, so I better enjoy it while it lasts. Dark Princess is definitely a great one, and definitely a great jump scare for a great price. And I really think her concept is really, really great. Just a demonic figure. I do wish there were a few changes, like the robe, just like i always wish there's detail in the row but we never get it and this is supposed to be like a satan prop almost like a, on the demonic side so you know go crazy with her give her some pendants give her some candles you know go red go gold it's it, it just black and white is too generic for my taste and while the face is as scary as hell i definitely think the wings and the clothes could use a lot more detail and thought but it is a great jump scare and for a great price. Now here we have our first main attractions prop, Barnaby the Bear. And I really am starting to like him. I was iffy on him at the beginning of the year, but I'm definitely, it's definitely growing on me. And one I am going to pick up, uh, probably. Because I do need, I guess, kind of circular prop for the middle of my carnival theme so people can walk around it hey it was either mr punchy or this guy so you're you guys have to be glad i'm getting this guy i'm not going for mr punchy anytime soon but yeah he's definitely a great one and it definitely had a great price i think i do think 280 is definitely worth it unlike monty's price and he is a pretty huge prop he will be huge in person and while he does look a little cheap i will admit with the pole going through his crotch and everything I don't know how else they would do it, but I guess they could figure out a way. They can figure out a way to put in, to make props like nibbles. I think they can figure out a way to move the pole either in his pants or something like that so it's covered, or maybe just put something like they did with Ice Cream Clown for Party City. Make it like part of the prop, like make it red and white or something, make it with spots, you know, just do something to hide that pole. Because that kind of makes the prop look cheap, not gonna lie. But his animation is really great. Him going around on the ball looks really, really menacing and really realistic. And definitely an impressive animation, to say in the least. And again, while the, while the bear itself does look kind of cheap, it definitely looks menacing and scary at the same time. Unlike Monty did. And I think he could use a little blood, but I could always add that. And I love the clothes, love the concept, love the execution, definitely a great prop. Coming in next, we have Neb Nibbles the Clown. I was very split on him, but I, 
the only reason why I do really love him is two reasons, actually. First of all, we get no jesters, and they're my favorite type of prop. So adding that little tiny hat on top of his head really made him climb up the ladder for me, since that makes him a jester. So that he's got background and stuff, and I really love jester props, and they just look so great in my opinion. And two, the animation. How could I forget? It's so great to see Spirit coming up with animation like this, and it really works how his head follows you. I think that's really great, and again, it works. So. It's really creepy, and it's really menacing, and while I do wish the face was a little less goofy, I can definitely see the animation complementing the face and making it more creepy when he follows you around the room, but I definitely wish they picked a more creepy face to follow you around the room. Nonetheless, his face is a step up from SBI's usual clown faces, so I won't take much points off for that. And I love the Halloween color schemes that this guy has. Definitely makes this jester Halloween-y instead of, you know, all multicolored. And I love his lollipop, adds some more character to him. And I definitely love the concept of nibbles. While the phrases are questionable at some times, it is very creepy phrases and very menacing. And I do really like his character. Up next, we have the Ringmaster. Kind of the face of Spirit Halloween this year. And it's almost a mascot, if you will, of Spirit 2024, and will always be. So this guy will kind of go down in history for Spirit, and I really love that. Definitely one I'm going to try to pick up. That reminds me, the price tag is definitely not that fair. 330 I think him and Dan at the 3 for 30 price. The, that price definitely doesn't justify him, but it, he does have a lot going on. He moves his hand back, of course. Um, you know, putting the clothes out, and that just shows his chest with all the souls in there via um, projectors. And I do kind of like that he has the black heart skull. I'm kind of mixed on that because this isn't like a face mold deal. They don't have to use the black heart skull, but they choose to. And I think they knew that we would notice that because maybe they this guy has some lore with the black heart. Like, I mean, Spirit loves to do their lore stuff. So I would love to see more lore in the future between these two characters, and we may even get a third character to the story. So they probably have very, very, I mean, similar lore together. And I really love how they did that because, again, they were doing this on purpose. They could pick any single projection skull, but they went with the black heart, and they knew what they were doing. So I really love how these guys are kind of crossed together. And, I mean, only time will tell we might see in the future, or we'll just have to figure it out ourselves. The Ringmaster is definitely a great character from his clothes to his face and stuff, and his body is all bulked out. I really like that. Again, gives it more character, and I really love how creepy his face is. Again, it has a lot of character. It's all bulk. It's a bulky guy, and we don't get a lot of those. The last one I can think of was Buzzsaw. Actually, when I first saw this guy, I thought he was Buzzsaw in a costume, which was kind of funny. You can definitely see the resemblance. And I really, I can't get enough of that face. Love the animation. His phrases are never going to be forgotten. Classic phrases from the Ringmaster. And notice he also does have the black heart as a cane. So that's really, really cool. And in the future, Spirit, I'm definitely excited to see how these two characters are crossed. So next up we have Michael Myers. I was really expecting him to be farther down on the list, but I'm really growing. He's really growing on me. And honestly, I think he holds the best play, the place for being the best looking Michael Myers in the retail industry that we have ever gotten. Beats the Jemmy one, beats the Party City one, and those two are really amazing. So for him to look that good, in my opinion, is really something. But I wish in his, his mask looks great, first of all, but I really love the blood too. That might be why he's an online only. I do wish he had like blacked out eyes because he's supposed to be shot in the eyes. So I think I would think there would be like, you know, blown up. I don't know why they're just there and they look fine. I wish that was changed. And again, it's a very gory prop. He has the bullet holes and the knife. And everybody's questioning why he's an online only where, well, there you go. I'd honestly rather go gore than just make him in stores and make him plain. But it sucks that he is 
like online and you know we get props like cremator and gravestone pool in stores so it's, he's really great and i do wish they used the michael myers soundtrack but come on that's never gonna happen on one of these which sucks but the one they did use is pretty cool so next up we have bobby strings this is definitely a great one and one of the most unique of the year and even on the side of being the most expensive of the year, I think 309 definitely justifies this guy. He's amazing and very impressive, and his limbs all go out, and it's crazy how he does that. This, it's actually working like an actual marionette, where the string, the motors are in that little thing up there, and are in the strings, pulling each limb up and pulling it eight inches out. It's very impressive, very huge. This is a six or seven foot marionette. And up to that, up to the strings, I forgot what it's called, that wood piece. It is 7.5 foot, huge prop. Definitely one I'm going to pick up, hoping to pick up. And I just love the look of Bobby overall. His face is really, really creepy and uncanny and definitely an unsettling looking thing. I really like how they went with the kind of unsettling and creepy look, uh, either than like, you know, teeth and blood and stuff, because I think it really complements his look, and definitely an uncanny face. Love the clothes, and I love the color scheme, and I definitely like, love the concept. They went all out with Bobby here, and I really love what they did with him. He's definitely one of the most unique props of the year and ever, I guess. The last marionette prop, I think, was Little Daisy and the Maestro, so I'm glad we're getting more of them, and when you see, when they're done right, as you can see, they are great. So I love to see more of them, Spirit, and Bobby Strings is really great. So now starting with the props. We're at the point where I'm, we're starting with the props that I adore. Like, these are the best props of 2024, not just Spirit Halloween, but 2024 Halloween season in general. That's just my personal opinion. But what's a, what's a more better prop to start off than Ghostface? In my opinion, this is the best Ghostface animatronic we have ever gotten. Beats the Jemmy one, in my opinion. And honestly, I don't see how anybody can't say that. I've never been a big fan of the Jemmy one. Even though it was bulked out and had body shape, I thought it was too bulked out. Kind of looked cheap. Animation was all robotic. And, you know, it had those crappy all lights. But this guy is really cool. His animation is amazing and a great jump scare while he's at it. And you can either change the knife to be in the up position or the down position or have blood or not have blood. Same thing with the mask. You can have the decrepit mask on or you can have the bloody mask on. I personally would go with the bloody mask if I do buy this thing, which his chances are pretty high. But I really love his animation and the fact that he wobbles around. He's a very, you know clumsy killer so it, it kind of makes sense and it has a bunch of body shape to him like i mean he has that bulk up in the chest i believe he has a chest piece so that's really cool to see and he definitely looks realistic from afar and even up close you can't you probably can't tell that that's an animatronic and it could most definitely be a scare actor so overall, I think this is an amazing animatronic ghost face, and definitely the best we've gotten. Love the audio, love everything about it, and definitely hoping to see it in person. Up next is some of the best licensed props ever made in my opinion. Sorry it's split into like sections, I guess. We had, like, at first, we had the oddities, then we had all the main attractions, now we have the license props. That's kind of how my ranking works, honestly, but they're kind of all over the place. Anyway, uh, Emily and Victor are amazing license props. I definitely don't think they are better than the Jack and Sally, even though they might do more and might look better. Jack and Sally will always be a classic to me. So those are still my favorite, but that's not to say these are bad because again, these are one of the best, two of the best licensed props ever made in my eyes. It's Spirit Standards and just in general. And I think Spirit did an amazing job. First of all, Emily looks amazing. Both props are really true to the character. That goes for Emily a lot here. Her dress is all dirty and the bottom is like blue. I don't know why, but that is in the movie too, so I'm not taking points off. 
the face is all like rotted on one side with the teeth showing and then the flowers are all rotted and it just looks so good so accurate to the movie and i really love how victor looks too holding the ring was a very very nice choice and his skinny body is definitely really nice and again um one-on-one -on -one to the movie and what i'm most impressed about which i probably shouldn't be but is the hair they got the hair down really really well even though that is plastic the hair looks amazing that's just how it is in the movie all messed up and ruffled when he's like running through the woods and i love love how that looks also both take audio from the movie and i think those few audio lines they do have really fit each character well and just are really nice. I know I'm counting both characters as one in this ranking system because I can't choose one over the other. They're both amazing pieces from this movie and from Spirit Halloween, and I can't wait to see them in person. Now, here we have the giant death ray. We're getting into my favorite of all time for Spirit Halloween, like literally all time, great year for Spirit Halloween, it's definitely growing on me like heck, and I just adore this year. I think last year was a little better, but anyway, the Death Ray is an amazing alien prop, and one I definitely want to add to my collection. Just a very unique looking alien, and it's not a classic alien like you would see, but I mean, I, that's why I kind of like the 10 foot alien from Costco. It's like a classic alien, whereas this is I guess a unique, more unique take on the alien character. And we have a lot of those, like the one from Home Depot, and I kind of just want to see a classic alien, just like the one we got from Costco, and may I add, the Costco one is $100 less, but I will be hoping and I will be looking to pick up both of these because I really crave Death Ray too, and I do really like the skeletal look of him, while I would probably choose the more skin-on alien that we all know and love. I think the skeletal look really works in its favor for the character he is, and I definitely love the lights. Height is great, and even though he's 350, I do think that is pretty much worth it when you get props like Thresher and Stilts for 350, and then Slim for 400. So that's not too bad uh, considering spirit standards and just in general. But 20% off, you get him for 280, which is not bad at all. And I really, really love his music. Definitely the best part about this prop. He, I adore this alien prop. Ladies and gentlemen, Art the Clown. Now, I think this is definitely the best Art the Clown animatronic we have gotten in retail. That said, we only have two at the moment. We have the one from Party City. And I definitely think he is better, even though he goes without blood. Because, of course, red paint is most definitely a thing. And I am definitely eyeing this guy for $200 if that's... I feel like that's a glitch because all the other licensed props are 280 so he's uh, I'm betting my money that he's gonna come out 280 but even then I would probably buy him but if he's really 200 he's definitely on my radar and I will definitely have him by the end of the year his animation is just so creepy and very subtle but I think that just adds to the creepy factor whereas it would be on like I props like crouchy Maybe that would be a little a little negative, but this guy needs subtle and slow animation. And I think it's all very fluid and doesn't look like it's coming from an animatronic at all. Nonetheless, an actual person. And I really love how his face looks one on one to the movie. And again, you can switch it out with those sunflower glasses, which I think really added character to him. So I definitely like those and they definitely stand out from the rest of his black and white color scheme. And he's honestly very tall too. And the horn honking is all the audio he has, and I adore that. That's the only audio, unlike the Party City one. There's laughing when he doesn't laugh, there's music in the background, it's a little too much. But this is Art of the Clown we're talking about, and honking is all he needs to be a really creepy prop. We make our way to the top three of the year. And starting off with the Demonic Gatekeeper. This is one I jumped on right when he released because I couldn't want him more. And I just love him. Go check out my unboxing on him if it isn't on the channel already. Because as I'm talking, he's officially not at my door. So definitely stay tuned or either go check that out. Anyway, he is an amazing prop in so many different levels. He is huge. He's like a Rattles 2.0, so what's not to love about him? 
I really love the rattles props. So you could tell that I really love this guy since, again, he's an upgraded rattles on so many different great levels. He's a demonic character. He fogs. The fogging is amazing. And it really looks like he's on fire. And it, the face and the hands are so massive and yet so damn detailed. It's crazy. This prop looks like it's from Distortions. And it look it would stand out from everything in your yard. That's why I bought this thing. Not just because of the size, but because of the character too. Now, I think he would definitely be first place if there... It, on this ranking system if there wasn't for this one complaint which is a pretty big complaint so that's why he's in third to last and that's that's just the minor thing of i wish it was a different character again a pretty big complaint but that's not to say i really like the reaper that we got and definitely a demonic and sinister and scary as hell looking reaper but i do wish we got some more classic demon to go with the demonic gatekeeper character and just the demonic gatekeeper name because i don't think a reaper really justifies that we do get a lot of reapers and they do look nice like this guy but i would definitely choose a demon over what we got here but i still do think what we got here is amazing especially for a reaper prop So coming in second to first place, we've got Wanda Webworth. You guys probably already know what my first pick is. And Wanda Webworth is an amazing and breathtaking prop to say in the least. And definitely a nightmare fuel animatronic. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This thing could be from Unit 70 Studios. Which if you know them, they're an amazing professional company. And this thing definitely looks pro. It not only it not only moves like a pro prop, it looks like a pro prop. Now in terms of movement and animation, it not it might not be much at all, but what we do get is very, very scary and nice. We've got those two arms moving in front, and they're very big movements and very big arms. So they're like they're like three feet long arms reaching out at you and they're going really fast and very fluid so it definitely looks scary and it definitely looks realistic and then you've got that mouth going at the same time and again very fluid very realistic and very scary it opens really wide and i really love how it does that with all those teeth and i definitely like the rest of the look of the spider i will say those long legs at the end I don't know what to think about that because they do add to the scary factor of it and the mutant factor of it, but they also kind of look weird and tacky and cheap, but I do really like them honestly and I do think they add to the character, so I'm not going to take any points off of it, but I love that fluffy body and I love the um, just scary face in general with all the eyes and then the eight legs and stuff and the body looks really creepy too and again, can't get enough of those teeth or the legs. Or just this prop. At 270 I think that is a steal with a 20% off coupon. That comes down to like 210 for a 6 foot mutant spider. No doubt buying this thing for my lab theme. Throwing a lab coat on it and drenching it in blood. This thing is amazing. And definitely one I would expect to see at Trans World. Nonetheless, Spirit Halloween. Definitely an amazing prop from Spirit. In first place, the first, the best animatronic of the year, in my opinion, from Spirit Halloween 2024 is Cotton Candy Dan, no doubt. No competition. Cotton Candy Dan will go down in history as one of the scariest clowns and the creepiest clowns and the best clowns, in my humble opinion. And I think he is an amazing animatronic. I had no hopes for this thing when we got the name of Cotton Candy Dan, but he definitely proved me wrong. I really love the color scheme of yellow and bl blue and red. It's very unique colors, but yet very just obvious colors. And some that we don't see in clowns. We usually see like, I don't know, white and stripes and stuff. But this is very unique. And I love how the shirt is one color instead of polka dots or something on it. Like SVI usually does with their clowns. And I definitely love Jim's head. Jim's head, first of all, is very scary and very creepy and just it has scratches on it like Dan's been messing around with it and it's screaming and the eyes are whited out and it's very scary overall. And 
Dan's head is one I really want to talk about because it is a scary ass clown head and one you would not expect to see at Spirit Halloween, nonetheless at Spirit in stores because this guy is going to be an in-store prop. And I think it is a great jump scare and even if it wasn't a jump scare, it would still be a scary ass static and I really love how, I really love the dark humor in this prop, how he's mimicking the corpse's screams. If you look closely in other people's demo videos, it does not show it in the spirit demo, but if you look closely, he does open his mouth and scream when the corpse is screaming. That means that Jim is officially dead, and that means that Dan is mimicking the corpse, which I think is crazy ass to think that we're getting a prop like that at Spirit Halloween, a clown mimicking a corpse, and a scary ass clown at that, and I really can't get enough of the look of this guy. Can't get enough of the cotton candy concept. We've only got like a few cotton candy props. And I really love how this one turned out in general. I love his face. Love Dan's face. Love the concept. Love the animation. Love the jump scare. And I love his stance. And I love that he's going to be in stores for 2024. But the price at 330 I cannot justify that. Maybe it's just that I don't have him in my hands right now. But I will definitely try and get him on the sale. I do not think anybody should pay, be paying $3.30 for this guy, though. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my official 2024 Spirit Halloween animatronic ranking. So thanks for watching, and as always, Digital Pumpkin Cat, like, and subscribe. I honestly really like this new system I'm using, the worst to best system, and I think it really shows off the props well. And I think Spirit, on one hand, had a great year this year, maybe even their third or second best. I definitely think uh, last year beats it, but this year is a unique year to say in the least, and a very scary year with all these props, and I cannot wait to see the theme, and I cannot wait to see you guys at Spirit Halloween.